Hey guys, this is Matt Kaur from controlpaint.com and welcome back to Vector Bootcamp. So far we've talked about the basic tools, some more real world workflow, and now in episode three, we are gonna look at compound paths. Once again, here I have a worksheet for both of us to follow. If you haven't downloaded yours yet, it's at the bottom of the post. And these are complicated shapes. The interesting thing about them is they are actually one layer in Photoshop. This top row here are all combined shapes. And the bottom row here are a large shape with a smaller shape subtracted from it. So let's see how to make both of those scenarios. This is kind of the most straightforward. So once again, for the sake of demonstration, I'm working with slightly translucent layers. You don't need to do that. So my group here is set to low opacity, but the layers themselves are normal shape layers. So I have the shape tool and I'm just gonna drag out rectangles. With a shape like this one, I actually just wanna have almost perfect clones. So this, there's nothing new here. I just hold down Alt and drag a copy, drag a copy. I'm also holding Shift to keep the vertical alignment constrained. There we go. And if I wanted to be real precise about it, I could select all those, do distribute horizontal centers. Nice, okay. Uh, now I'm gonna make this other shape. Now this one, I'm gonna have to make with the pen tool. Same deal, set to shape mode, no stroke, just a fill. But making this one is very easy. Hard corners all around. And if something didn't turn out quite right, you hold down control, click a point. There we go, that seems fine. So then I will drag out a couple copies of that. And here I have all the individual components. Now each currently is on its own layer. What I need to do is to flatten them down just like I would with a bitmap layer. The difference though is that there's some sort of rules by which Photoshop handles their combination. The rule is right here. I want combine shapes. Now, the way that this operates is really weird and I wish it were easier to understand, but you'll hit combine shapes and sometimes nothing will happen. Then you can hit control E and it'll merge all those together. Now you'll notice now that they are merged, the combined shape option has changed. So why it works that way, I'm not entirely sure. But I'll show you here, it would be the exact same for two totally different shapes. So on a new layer, I'll speed up the footage here just a little bit. Nothing new here, you just make your shape and then I can make another shape. So here I'll do the ellipse tool to pull a perfect circle. Select both of those layers, hit Control E and set this to combine shapes if any problems happened. So far, so good. This one here is a little trickier. So what I'm gonna do is begin by on its own layer, just drawing in the hillside. And once I've got my hillside, now I need to figure out an efficient way to add all these buildings. What I see here is either a pretty complicated set of anchor points or just a bunch of rectangles. I'm gonna choose the rectangle option. So what I'll do is I'll set the mode to combine shapes. So we can see the little two merged rectangles. And now I'm just gonna start dragging and it should stay on the same layer. See there it worked. It did not make a new layer for each of these new rectangles. These are now compound paths. So I can speed up the footage once again here, but you can see what happens is I'm not making lots of extra layers, but I am able to easily build what looks like an otherwise complicated shape. And it's all because of the way I set up the rule in the first place. And what you're left with is one shape that you can modify however you please, because it is a compound path. Now the other variety is a subtraction. Here you make your first shape, and now you change the rules. So I would change my rule to subtract front shape. And here's where it gets weird. So what it did was it immediately inverted my layer. And this is a problem I've encountered often. I don't know why it works that way. So what we have to do is to make a new layer or just do something else. So here on a blank layer, I go to the tool, I say subtract front shape. And again, no change happens here. I don't know why it works this way go back to the circle shape, and now the shape has changed, but it has not inverted. So I draw my second shape, and there I have a nice compound. What's nice about this is you can then, with the direct selection tool, the white arrow, one, two, three, four, I'm holding down shift to select those, and then you can drag that around 
or use free transform and get it just right. And so I'm not affecting the container shape, just this whole cut. Okay. And once again, we're left with a single layer that I could manipulate however I want to. Compound shape. So I'm going to skip ahead and show you this more complicated example. So on a new layer, I would begin by putting in my container shape, and then I go to the shape tool, and I have to make sure that my mode is set correctly. So subtract front, got the shape tool. There we go. So I've made one window. And while these points are still selected, if I have a number of other cuts I want to make, I can just hold down Alt and drag a copy. And then I can drag a box around those ones and hold Alt and drag a copy and drag another copy. Then I can drag a box around all these points, hold down Alt and drag a copy. And what I've done there is make quick work of a relatively complex shape. It's a single path now, compound path, and something like this can be very useful for a more complicated illustration. So I encourage you to try these out for yourself. It is hard at first. And I really wish that some of these weird idiosyncrasies work differently, but as far as I can tell, they're not going to change. So get used to the way Photoshop works and you're going to get a lot more out of these vector tools. Thanks for coming to the site and I'll see you in the final week of Vector Bootcamp.